hi everyone welcome back i hope y'all are doing great i am doing okay um i did an off-season craft project for january <laughs> i gonna be doing one every month, um, but in the comment section, I was asked if I would do a tutorial for that. And I want to tell you, normally I do like how I made it, make it video, but I don't know if you really like those or not. So I'm just going to stick to what I normally do is like make a how you make it. And then for the projects that I'm doing by myself, I may make a show a longer video. And if it's a collaboration video, I will do the work up and then just do a project share for the collaboration date and then release the video later on if if I don't screw up too much in the making of the project um, or if like the family is awake and things like that. So circumstances um, may not permit me to make a tutorial while I'm making a project. Anyway, so this is a project that I shared with you. I'll leave a link in the description box or iCard. Um, if you didn't get a chance to check it out, I think it's really cool. It's just a little, um, it's like a little album, I guess you could say, but it has like tuck spots and things you can do a journal if you like with it as well. And so this has envelopes in it and all the pockets are open, but I didn't put anything in it because I was covering them up, but I left the opening on the envelope so you could, um, decide how you want to do it yourself. I used eight envelopes. I actually made like a little um spine from the envelopes so i have the envelopes out already and the crazy thing is i worked on one yesterday but i didn't like the video so this will probably be another little project share and this thing is super thick a lot of stuff happened yesterday the smoke detector battery was beeping so i told a big room and i said we need to go ahead and break down and get the expensive batteries and we have a lot of smoke detectors so you know what that means with the expensive batteries like the energizer or duracell because the the ones we're using are not good and i i feel better using the more expensive ones for my sanity even though the batteries work they just um die quick i guess so maybe they were older batteries that i picked up all right so what I have right here is the front and the back of the envelope of the book that we're going to be making. And so, I'm going to fold this back on itself. I'm going to fold this back on itself, just like that. And I like for my covers to be flat, so not the opening portion. Even though it really doesn't matter because I'm going to cover it up, I would prefer that. Now, whenever I get ready to do this, I'm going to decide how wide I want my spine and so this is where you can decide if you want a thick journal or not I'm just coloring it so you can see right I don't normally color it um, so right now I think I just want a decent spine size um, enough to put these envelopes in all of these let's see and I have one I think a six two three four five six now remember if you put a lot of envelopes or stuff in the middle you need to make sure your spine can support that okay and so what i am going to do is i just put you can still see the color hopefully i'm just going to put this here now these are prefabricated envelopes that i picked up from michael's hot buy a long time ago it's 80 in the pack so 80 cards 80 envelopes and but you can make your own if you like. You don't have to buy these. If you have lots and lots of paper, you can go ahead and make your own. And you see how right now I have that width for my spine. I'm just going to go ahead and tick this, you know, put a little notch right there. And I am pressing down on it, but I want to, if you can see, yes, you can see. I'm just going to put a little line right there. So you see how I put that line? That's how wide our spine is going to be. And even though our spine is a little bit wider, we want it to um, be able to be expanded without having an alligator mouth. I think that's what it's called. Because if you look at this one, even though I had different plans for it and I didn't do it, um, you can see that it kind of opens up. And that's fine um, because I really kind of want, whenever I give it to someone, I kind of want it to be like a chunky thing that they can put other stuff in, you know, write notes, maybe some pictures. So I'm I'm making it with the, the thought that they'll make it larger if they want. 
but also I want to give them, you know, whoever receives this some wiggle room. So I'm going to come up here and where I made my line at, I'm just going to look to see where the line is, where I need to cut on the um, scoring board, the paper trimmer. So when I get ready to cut this again, I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to go back and remeasure. Make sure you can put it on as straight as possible, even though it, it should not matter um, because you are going to be able to cut it down and trim it. So now with this one, what I want to do, because I want to have a little bit of a reinforced um, back or area. What I'm going to do is I want to take my scoring tool. I'm just going to run that in. Now, you don't have to do this like this. But I am doing that, okay? So we're going to put this to the side for now. And I'm going to fold this over on the crease that we just created. All right. Just going to make sure that this crease is good to go. And we're going to put these two creases right on top, on the two fold pieces right on top of each other. Because we want our spine to um, be really sturdy, right? Because we're going to put a lot of things on the spine. So that we have it just like that. And the only reason why I didn't cut this off is because, I, you know, we cut this piece off. I just want, and these papers are really thin, so I want them to be... Um, as sturdy as possible. Now I'm going to use some glue. I'm going to put it on the spine, not the fold portions, not the creases where you made your creases at. Because if you do that, whenever you feel like it's okay, once you get ready, once the glue starts to really dry, um, over a few days, it's going to be hard to fold. So now what I'm doing is I'm just lining this up where we made the crease and I'm pushing this crease on the bottom crease I'm just using my finger to apply pressure and now I use the bone folder and I'm going to smooth it down I'm going to turn it over I'm going to do the same thing so you have your spine. Now here is where the crazy confusion stuff may um, ensue. I'm going to go ahead and um, take my glue stick and glue this down as well. If you like to use the adhesive that's already on the envelopes, you know, if you have like a little wet dab or something, you can do that. No no worries you know use that glue that you pay for i guess i just never um i never have water in the room because sometimes i'll forget and leave the door open and then i don't want the cat or the baby to come in here and mess with anything on the desk so now i'm just going to fold this back over and make sure it can fold same way with this one the same way with this crease if it can't fold properly, that means that Brandy did something wrong. But that's okay. We're going to go ahead and recrease it um, just to make sure. I'm just running it already on the already made crease line. So even though you you know, you know do your best not to get it on there, um, sometimes if you put too much glue, it can do that. All right. So we're going to just go back and refold this down. Okay like that and now our crease is made or our spine is made and that's a really thin spine so you want to be careful with your pages because remember we're going to cover front and back so even though the spine won't be wider the pages will be wider and so I just like whenever I'm doing this I want to just do a quick check you know a post check to make sure that I have gotten it how I want it to be and I have okay so since we have six pages on here we're gonna have three and three like this and I usually try to make sure my center page 
um, can be exactly just like this when you open it up versus like this but you know they're going to be covered up pages and you the person if you're going to get this to someone they won't know but you'll know and the reason why you'll know is because if you want to stuff something in, something into the pocket you may not be able to get that into the pocket so now what we're going to do is we're going to just take two envelopes and we are going to come back to this original fold and you can do this two ways you can do it this way, a cheater, Brandy's cheater cheater way. You see how we have it on the fold? So we have this on the fold, just like this. I actually thought of another way to do this, but I need to work it out first to see if it's possible before I share it with you. And I want to make this a little bit shorter. So let's go ahead and do this so we can all see our original crease line, right? This is the original crease line. Doesn't matter that I'm using green marker because I'm going to cover the pages up and if not then the green we'll just have to distress everything with green so here's our our um, first page we're going to put in here and we're going to put that right on the green line so now what I want to do is I want to put a tick mark outside of the green line and outside well inside in between these two greens not outside but in between so one, two, I want to put it like right here. Okay. And I'm going to take the second envelope and do it the exact same way. And the reason why we're doing this is because once we cut this down, we're going to stack the papers up like this on top of each other. And we need for it to be... Um, We need for each thing to come in each fold to be able to slide in. All right, so now we're going to take our paper trimmer again and we're going to cut this score or this pencil marking. And I'm just cutting where you all can see. I'm cutting right on that line, making sure this is straight. Now, I told you that these papers were, these envelopes were prefabricated. And for some reason, either my trimmer is off, which I don't know it could be, or the paper is a little bit on the warped side which is okay you know we're going to cover it up but it just makes it a little bit difficult for me to trim it down because I'm like why is it not going straight why does it feel crooked and it could be my lines my tick marks as well okay so now here is the thing you have this okay so if you cut this down properly it should be this sliver should go right neatly in between the two green lines, okay? And that's what you want. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our glue. Just one last check. I always check this to make sure I'm, I um, <laughs> actually did it right. Every time I'm like, oh, did I do it right? Okay, good, 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 good. All right. And as you can see, I just folded, I'm folding it backwards. It doesn't matter if you want to fold it backwards or not. I just think that for some reason, the first, the first one lays down a lot easier backwards than forward. Now here comes the, the part that's going to start to get annoying. We're going to cut this down more and more and more each time. So um, if you have um, whatever you use for adhesive, you can also use... You know glue I mean tape but I put down stuff crooked and even though the art glitter glue dries a lot faster than the other glue that I use it still doesn't adhere as quick as tape okay so I'm just pushing this up a little bit and I'm going to go ahead and varnish this down with my finger and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this page and overlay it right directly on top of this one. Right. And since we're working with art glitter glue, I don't want to test the glue guides this morning. I want to go ahead and um, put that glue little seal on top. I'm just applying some pressure right here. And 
I want to make sure See, this one's a little short so I'm going to try to slide this up you want to do all this before you apply that pressure because once you put the pressure on it it may not um, want to slide up and that's when you know your wet or glues could come into play the glues that give you a little bit more wiggle and slide room if you mess up though you can always just um, start over unless you have a specific number of envelopes and you don't want to um, cut up any more of your envelopes of paper I usually mess up at least two <laughs> each time I do this um, but I just save the envelopes for later um, projects all right so here we go and this is how it's looking so far I hope that this is uh, making some sense to you and what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to come and varnish this down directly on top All right, so now we're going to take two more envelopes and we're just going to repeat the steps. All right, so I'm just bending these backwards just because I like to do that. And we can just go ahead and reapply those lines if you want to. If you feel confident right now, you don't have to. The glue is still drying, so this may not have been, you know, the smartest thing for me to do is put more glue. I mean, put this little mark on top. But as you can tell, the lines should start to increase decrease in width which could make it a little bit harder for us to <laughs> cut the paper okay so now what we're going to do is just go back in and make our tick mark right in the inside of that line and the same thing with this one If you're for your two that you're going to have when you cut them, if they um, are a little bit, one is a little bit bigger than the other one, make sure you put the larger one down first versus the smaller one, um, only because you'll have problems getting those, the larger one on top of the smaller one. All right. Here we go. I'm going to break this up into two parts just so you um, know. The first part will be us constructing the book base, I guess. And the second part will be us um, decorating it. My little one is awake and he keeps coming in. Um, and it's too early for him to be up. So I'm going to have to make um, go and get him back in bed. And I may work on this project another day but I'll release everything you know like within days apart so if you're concerned like why did you do that to me um, I, I won't leave you hanging but I'll do all the videos first okay so I just want to make sure that I didn't do what I said don't do and this one is a little bit wider and that's okay so we're going to just go ahead and put this one in here first all right and this time I think we're going to just go ahead and fold it. So the thing that we should be doing is inching over in, in between and not just constantly putting on top of the directly over the, the seam because we want our goal is to make it look like it's actually book pages. If you can see how it's starting to inch in more and more versus all on the same spot on the same spot the first one yes the second one which we're working on right now should not be like that and the last one should be like right in the middle and the last one is where i had the hardest time actually getting it there now if you feel like you have a lot of space in the middle you can always just take a single sheet of paper or a single envelope you don't have to um have two you can take a single envelope and just put it directly where you feel like you have that space is your space and um, just lay the paper down inside of there and I'll show you that I'll try to show you an example of that as well so now I'm just burnishing this down with my finger 
and I think it's looking pretty good. <laughs> I may be a little bit biased, but that's okay. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to put this one here. And now it's when I start to really like check it out to make sure I'm doing it the way I want it to be done versus not doing it how I envision it in my head. Okay. So even if I feel like the pages are not coming together well, I'll just make sure that I can see why it's not working out the way I want it to work out. So this is the piece we're working on. You see how if you slide it over and you look at that, you see our spine is it's starting to form a really good spine. My concern is the next layer of paper needs to be smaller than this and that is going to be crazy okay so now what i'm going to take this side that line and i'm going to push it all the way up against the fold right this fold that i have standing up i think this probably works a lot easier if um maybe you have a wider space and that's another thing that i was i've contemplated i, I think i have a, a different idea of how we can do this i think i'm gonna try to do a cardian piece and we'll see if that works out first i'll, I'll try it out first and then if it is easier which this is not hard all you're doing is measuring and cutting paper so it's not that hard i should say because it can be nerve-wracking and difficult but as you can see we're starting to move inside and so our last piece is going to be half of this our last two pieces our last two pieces now i'm only showing you this way um because i feel like it'll be a lot easier for us to get through the the construction of this but normally i'll do everything first like label measure and cut everything out and then glue it all down um, but you can do it however you want. So we're just going to come back here and we're going to, you see, we're constantly moving inward. And so you see how our line is? I'm on this side, I'm inside of the line and both of them. So, you know, um, and again, on the inside of that line as well. Okay. And the same thing with this. And I just take the envelope piece and the little lip portion and fold it back and forth just um, because I may decide that I want to fold it the opposite way of the natural fold that was manufactured. And if that's the case, I want it to be easier to cut and I mean fold before I cut it versus after I cut it. I am having some allergy stuff going over here. It started yesterday, and I don't know what in the world or why <laughs> it's going crazy on me. Um, but usually, like I didn't get a cold this year. Well, 2019, I didn't get a cold, but I have had a cough since October. So um, they keep saying that the pollen is high and the mold and the ragweed and I'm like I don't suffer from allergies like that but then I think about it and I really do which is horrible when I think like when I think about it usually in the summertime I get like hay fever and a cold um which is odd you know people say why how do you get a cold in the summer I, I'm usually the sickest <laughs> in the summer versus the winter I think I just need to move to a place that's cold more than hot so now what i'm doing is i'm just um checking this and again we're going to do the exact same thing with our little um spine so we're just going to look inside and see how this page fits in and i think it's fitting really really nice what do you think so you can go ahead and throw both of them in and you can see the finish project without it being completely finished all right so let's go ahead and try not to go crazy on this this one right here because you see how small that little line is 
and I want to try to, yeah, it's going to be a challenge to say the least. All right, so here we go. Were you holding your breath like I was? <laughs> all right, so I'm going to bring this in all the way over to this green line. All right, so I'm going to slide it up because it looks like I, I feel like it's a little bit off. And this is the one I told you that gave me the most problem on the other journal as well. Um, because it's, the line is thin, you know, if you have, if you have some good thin tape, you can always try that. It may work for you. Like the glue is just easier because I can manipulate the glue a lot better. All right. And now for our last one, which is right here. Now, if you want to, you can let your project dry for a few hours before you start messing around with it. If my little guy wasn't up. I would just go into the next project, but since he is awake, I will not be doing it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise this up. I'm going to make sure I can sit this right there on top of there, just like that. And apply some pressure. I'm going to burnish it down. You see it's inside the line still, that green line. So if you need to, I mean, this is a good way to guide yourself as well. It was a good way to guide myself. So now, um, so if you need to, you can make those lines on your paper. It just, you know, it helps out some. So you can see that everything was inside the line. And you can make a thinner line if you feel like maybe your line is too big and you could have, you know did a little bit different so now I'm just going back and I'm burnishing down all of it and I'm making sure that none of the glue has seeped out into the seam because that could happen when you're heavy-handed with glue like myself so you just want to go back and check it and you see like right here even though it's not down this fold somehow is not acting right so I'm just going to burnish this in it's always that one page in your book right that doesn't want to lay down properly all right. Okay. And now we have our little book, which is cool already. I like it. So you see what I was telling you about in that middle section? If you want the, I, I like for my books to lay down like this. I really, um, I don't know. I just like for them to open up. I think growing up in the South and visiting people's house, they usually always have a little Bible. So I always open up to um, a scripture. I guess that's why I do it. Not to, not that this is a Bible, but I just like the open up portion. So now if you want to, or if you feel like this middle piece is not enough, you know, you, you feel like you need to put another piece there because it is so, um, so much water and space in there. Now remember, you will be putting paper on top of these. So that is your decision. And we can look over here and see um did we do a good job because do we have any pages coming out of the middle and that's really the goal now remember all these papers are the exact same size so if you're stacking on top of each other the papers may inch out a little bit and that's where you can come back and decorate with a piece um your cover to be a little bit longer than the inside so here you are just like that now i'm going to show you real quick i'm not going to cut this um piece but what you can do with this piece is the exact same thing you did with the back piece. Is that you just find where you want it to go. Say if you want it to go directly in the center, right? So you want this to go directly in the center. Now this will be hard to do because this line is so small. But if you want it to go directly into the center like that. You see and it closes it off. I just don't want to get into adding more and more pages. So directly into the center. What you do find your center of your paper okay and that's the center and so you had this tiny 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 sliver to work from you see that 
I'm not giving you any measurements, one, because I don't want to math, and two, because you're going to make your own gusset as wide as you want it to be. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over and I'm going to score it gingerly because this paper is cheapola. All right, so we have it scored now. Once you have your score, and it's almost the exact same size as that, so we may need to go in um, even smaller, but we'll try this one first. Let's see. Okay. Once you have your score, you're going to make sure that you put this sheet in the middle of this one, okay? So, we're going to go ahead and do this just like this. I know I said I wasn't, but I guess I am. All right. So, I'm trying to keep my glue line as close to possible as the original fold in the paper versus the one I made. Yep, I'm definitely having some type of dust allergen attack go on. So now I'm going to look at the middle and I'm going to just um, put my paper directly in that middle piece. Just like this. Hopefully it's in the middle. <laughs> okay. Just like that, right? Ah. So is it in the middle, Brandy? Almost. And with this, you know, th this portion, this piece will take some time because it's a thin, 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 tiny little piece that you're actually putting in the middle of your paper. I'm in Struggleville right now, but that's okay. We're going to get it. All right, so we got this down. Right. Make sure that it looks good in the center. What do you think? You like it? All right. So let's go back to this centerpiece. I'm going to burnish it down. And now we will fold this piece back on itself. And now you can either cut this piece off, which you know, would be easy to do. You just take your scissors and slice it or your, um, what is that thing called? Exacto knife, if that's what you wanted to do. And slice it down. I'm just trying to erase some of this junk, the glue junk. And let's see, let's check first. Okay, so you see, you like it? Let me know. <laughs> All right, so I, um, We'll do one or two things since the middle, the middle, middle. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. This should be four. Yeah. Um, that's why I like to have even numbers because it's not a true middle anymore. But you can go ahead and glue this down if you like. So this would be like the middle. So if you want to, you can go ahead and glue this down and be done with it. Or you could take your scissors and cut it. What I'm going to do, because I don't want it to stay in the middle, is just take this piece off and let it air dry and recycle that page okay but that's how you would put a middle piece in you see see the difference i don't mind it being like that only because i feel like i'm going to be able to achieve the exact same thing you see it's a little bit chunky right there but it opens up to the middle this is my middle and i have one two three four one two three four and that's what i like i like for it to be even when i'm doing the things like this proportions all right so i want to say thank you all for watching i hope that you've enjoyed this and i'll see you um for the second part which is covering this up i got to figure out what kind of cover we're going to do i guess i'll go and check on the baby and then grab some papers so i want to say thank you for watching until next time happy crafting